welcome back welcome back so this one is going to be data and information and please keep in mind this is not what i saw on the examiner's report for 2021 this is my interpretation of another way it could be done it's not as obvious as the other one however i think it's detailed enough so let me just go through and explain what i did and maybe why i did it so again, for this one, we want data and information. So what I've said is every single person or every single thing that is important to this company working needs to be on this list. So I have a list at the very bottom, which I'm going to go over again at the very end, but I wanted to show the examples first. The first one I have, I say person or thing is my label. Now you choose whatever you want. And I say the owner. Now the owner so far, um, based on what I've read on the paper, it seems to be like the most important person. So I'm just going to go with owner first. And what is the information that the owner needs? Now, data and information are slightly different and people use them interchangeably, but they are not the same thing. The data is the bits and pieces of things that you can put together to make up the information. So when I ask for staff information, for example, what I mean is the tiny things that make up staff information are the staff name, the staff rota, the staff contract, the staff level. So if there are um, a chef, an assistant manager, a manager, uh, a head chef, an IT person, an IT, what, whatever. So that's the staff information and it's broken down into the actual data, the bits and pieces I get from the data. And here I say finance accounts and for finance accounts, uh, I, I've kept this one stupid simple. I've said money in, money out and staff salaries. So this is the same one I showed in the previous video. So again, all I've done here so far is I've highlighted the thing or person that needs this information and or data. Well, in this case, it's going to be and data. The thing or person that needs the information and what data is associated with that information. So let me start again. So I've said the owner needs to know about staff. Obviously, they're hiring, they're putting out um, things on the in internet for people to apply for the jobs. They need to know about the staff. After you've been hired now, some of the things that they might need are here. Now, this is not an exhaustive list. In a database system, you would ideally want to have staff ID as well. So let me zoom in some more. Bear with me. Yeah, so in a database system, you're going to ideally want to have staff ID as the, as the primary key, as the very first thing, as a unique thing. Because, for example, my father and I have exactly the same name, right? And not only that, if it goes to birthdays, we're born in the same month. <laughs> and if, if it go be, goes beyond that, we lived in the same house for years and years and years. So it's not going to really work well if the unique identifier is just staff name. So I'm not going to go too much into databases here, but we're going to want staff ID, staff name, staff rota. So he or she can see when, when that person is working, staff contact details. Again, I've not gone into much detail, but I would, if I were you, I would go into more detail. I would say staff email address, staff phone number, staff address, as in their home address, staff level, and the options would be, so there would be manager, assistant manager, chef, head chef, servers, host, main, or, or, or head servers, or head host, whatever you want to call it. And for finance, the manager, sorry, the owner needs to know about finance because obviously it's their company. They need to know what's going on with the money. So we, we need to know the money in, the money out, staff salaries, contracting salaries. Now money out can be spread up into a lot of things, but I just left it as staff salaries and maybe I could put uh, bills as well, company bills. Um, things they have to buy from other company and things they have to pay out to other companies. So for example, the electric, the water, the gas, so on and so forth. And here I have um, the, the owner needs to know or have information on IT as well. And IT in this sense is not just the people, it's the company that the person is coming from. And it might also be some IT equipment, but I'm leaving that out for now. I've said external company name, maybe external company address, external company email address, external company address. And not only that, but the, the contractor's details. So the details of the actual person that the company is sending to us. So let's say the person's name is Bob the Builder. Bob's email is bobthebuilder at gmail.com. Bob's address is 25 Bob Lane SE 15, whatever the case is, right? So the details that come from the IT contractor specifically. And maybe also what I would probably add here is um, the number of PCs. So maybe put number of PCs, uh, number of phones. So think of all this, every single piece of data 
that is associated just to the information heading of IT. Maybe the routers, maybe the internet service provider, maybe the modem, maybe the switch, the printers, every single thing that you can think of. And for website, I've done exactly the same thing. Now, again, the manager would ideally, sorry, I keep saying manager, the owner, not the manager, the owner would ideally have some information that comes from the website. And now the basic thing that they might want to know as just an overview of what to do next is the orders made. So let's say on Monday we had 100 orders. Orders fulfilled. Out of the 100 orders, we managed to do about 95 of them. Next, we have complaints, ratings, and bookings. So again, my list here is not exhaustive. This is just stuff I could think of the top of my head, but it covers everything that's important in my opinion. We have the person or the thing that's important that needs to have the information and the data. We have the information section, which is essentially, think of the information as just a label of the overarching thing. So the thing at the top, and then the thing at the top will have tiny things inside of it. And the tiny things inside of it make up the thing at the top. So uh, let me see if I can use another example. So let's just say, um, don't worry about anything else, but let's just say the information was mobile phone. And the mobile phone, would be made up of specific components and the components in the mobile phone would be maybe processor, RAM, um, uh, screen, buttons, headphone jack, so on and so forth, right? Those components that make up the phone is actually the data in this case. So the things that make up all the stuff about a staff, those are the components of staff, let's say. The things that make up all the stuff about finance, those are the components of finance. The things that make up all the stuff about IT, and website are the components of IT and website. Hopefully that makes sense. And then finally, we have share information with, and I've said only managers here. Now, the reason I'm only sharing this with the managers, the manager is just the person under the owner. All the information here, or most of it would need to be shared with the manager just in case the owner isn't there, just in case the owner's on holiday, just in case we cannot contact the owner, just in case another, another member of staff wants to ask some questions, they shouldn't need to go directly to the owner. It's normally um, a manager, then a senior manager, and then maybe the owner, but managers should have access. We only read about managers in the paper, so I'm going to stick to managers. The next thing we need to have a look at is uh, the, the person or thing again. And in this case, I've said the website, that's a thing, right? That's a thing in the company that will help the company run in the future. So again, I've kept it very simple, not an exhaustive list. I've said order is one inf piece of information that they'll need and what data actually comes with the order. So we can think of order number. So this could be order ID as well, same thing. We could say order total, that's the amount of money that they would have spent. The order date and time, that's massively, massively important as well because somebody might have ordered something last week at 5 p.m. and it might have been a, a, a specific thing that didn't turn out very well and they might want to call and make a complaint or say, oh, that thing was really good. I want more of that. I ordered it last week. My order number was, and you should be able to find it just the same. We're going to ideally want the customer name, customer card details, customer's table number. So I said customer's table if the person is in the restaurant ordering from the restaurant. So, you know, in some restaurants, like I think Nando's was my main example, you can actually go into Nando's, sit down. And when you sit down, you use, I think you scan the QR code and then you order your stuff and it comes to your table straight away. You don't even have to do anything else. We could do customer pickup time as well, because if you're ordering from a website, you could just, I've ordered to Nando's already and only picked up. I didn't actually go in and sit down and eat. I ordered it, picked it up and left. And then under that, we're going to have stock, uh, stock and menu. So stock is going to be how many things they have in stock, how many things the restaurant has in the back room, in the storage room. And the menu is simply what we as a normal person can see. But these things, these both these things are linked because this, uh, the menu should be reflective of what stock is available. So let's say you go to Nando's and you try to order, you know, they have the quarter chicken where it's like leg and thigh and you, or you have breast and um, wing, I believe. So let's say you try to go and order that, but the stock room, the stock has been updated to say there's no leg and thigh. So when you go on the website to, to order leg and thigh, it should say out of stock. It should say unavailable. It should say something or not give you the option to choose it. This is, this is what I meant here. So I've said current stock levels for all items and kind of vague. I know menu combination. So I, for example, I like to have, um, leg and thigh and leg and thigh. I don't like breast and wing. So many combinations might be an important thing. Item prices, item names, IT, item allergy information. Again, very, very basic here. 
and the people or things that should have access to this information are the owner, obviously, the managers, the servers, uh, maybe the IT person as well, because maybe that person will eventually take over later on to managing the website and so on. But for now, we don't know that. So I'm going to leave it as it is. And again, the next one is person or thing. This is the POS system. So the point of sale system. Simply put, this is the till. And the till is going to be more or less the same as the website. Same as the website. However, the till is going to be managed by a member of staff. So I've simply added the staff stuff here. So what I'll do, I'll scroll up back to where I believe the owner was. Let me just copy all the owner stuff. Actually, no, I don't need a rotor and all of that. Let me leave it as it is. Let me leave it as it is. So if I go back down to staff, um, it's going to be staff name and staff level. So sometimes you get your receipt from Nando's. It will say like Ronald on there. And the level of the staff would have been like sh uh, server, sharer, manager, what, whatever the person is. And again, this, all this information and data should be shared with the owner, the managers, the servers, and IT. That's what I think. I didn't put IT in the previous one, but I put IT here. I think these are the people or things that should have access to this information and some of this data, maybe not every single thing, because IT probably doesn't want to know um, staff name at this stage. They might want to know staff ID. Maybe I should put staff ID actually. So let me take that out. I'll put staff ID. So if they have to create a user account for a staff, they'll just grab staff ID. They might grab staff name. Anyways, let me move on. Next thing we have is, did I not do managers already? No, I did not. Okay, fine. So I say managers and managers more or less has the same access as the owner. But down here where it says share information with, I've put owners, managers, servers, IT. Well, everyone should have some information. So the servers should have some information because they shouldn't have information on other colleagues, details and phone numbers and addresses and all of that. But the manager should have access to it. IT doesn't need to know where this person lives. So maybe some information there as well. And maybe accountants need to have, again, some pieces of information, not every single thing. Now, I'm going to stop going through. I think I had one more somewhere. Uh, no, I guess I didn't. So I'm going to leave it there. And I have I made some notes down here that say list all the people and things that are in the company. Think about the information that that person or thing needs. Think about the data that goes with that information. So down here, I've listed a few more things which I could, which I thought of after reading through one of the papers. So the person or thing would be the chef and you would fill in a table that's, let me just move this up one second. You would fill in a table that's exactly like what we've been looking through before. So chef would be here instead of managers and I would put information along the left and data on the right and fill it in just the same. We have servers and hosts. So these are probably the same type of people. Or I think there was bar staff as well, but they'll probably have access to the same type of information. We have accounting contractor. What would they have information to? Not everything. Keep that in mind. This is an, um, a contractor, somebody who comes from outside the company. Somebody has no real loyalty to the company. They get paid to come in and do a single job. You give them the bare minimum. And in IT terms, when you're doing IT in general, you just limit everyone to the bare minimum. And if and when they need more information, you assess what is needed and maybe you give it to them. I would do the same thing here. This is what I would do. Um, next one I had was the IT contractor. IT contractor should have a bit more free reign than the accounting contractor, but again, not too much. If you have no idea what to do, this is not a good idea. Having an IT contractor, if it's a, a company which you've used before, continue using that company if you're happy with them. IT contractors come and go. You don't want them to have full control of your systems because if anything goes bad, you have to go back to them. Um, person or thing, again, I have a restaurant inventory, a restaurant stock. I mentioned it above as well. Um, I think I did website already, but this is how I would do it. Again, these are simply the person or the thing. You fill in a table like this, and you should be okay. If you feel very comfortable using um, the ERD, then I think you, so sorry, ERD's um, entity relationship diagram. If you feel comfortable using that, the entity relationship diagram, please go ahead and use it. But I found in the past, students who've never done diagramming before this exam or before this unit don't really understand how it works. So I think this is exactly the same thing but the only difference is it doesn't have the lines linking it. And that's probably a bit easier. 
to, to process for some people and it's very easy to fill in. So hopefully that's useful. Hopefully that made sense. Good luck.